everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Liz and I'm one of the creative managers over at Premier Yarns. And I'd like to say thanks to Michaels for sponsoring this class. And thanks to all of you for uh, being, being here to crochet with me today. So this is a pretty easy um, stitch we're going to work on. It's the stripe crochet waffle scarf. And it's a pretty basic pattern. So I think I labeled this as like a beginner level class. I'm going to treat it as a beginner level. So we're gonna go nice and slow and I'm gonna to try to go through each and every stitch um, with a lot of detail. So if you're a beginner, this is gonna be uh, pretty good for you, okay? So let's go ahead and put my hands on the spotlight and we can just go over. We only need a couple supplies here. I have the pattern that's written out and we're gonna work straight from this. So if you have it in front of you, um, it's helpful to you know look over it with me. That'll help you read patterns, which is always a good, skill to have when you're working on crochet. And if you have any questions, just go ahead and put them in the chat. I'll try to keep an eye on it. Um, if I miss anything, you know, well, um, she's going to, the host is going to try to help me with that as well. So hopefully I won't miss any questions. Feel free to ask anytime. This is a Craftsmart value yarn. It's a worsted weight acrylic and it's got a 5.5 millimeter hook with this pattern. The pattern calls for a five millimeter. So I'm going to use a five millimeter, but with this pattern, as with any pattern, you're always going to want to use the hook that you get the correct gauge at. With a scarf, it's not going to matter that much, but if you're working on a hat or a sweater or gloves or socks or anything that's going to fit to your body, you always want to make sure you have the correct gauge because if not, your measurements are not going to be the same as what the designer of the pattern intended, okay? So here's a little sample that I started. It's a very, very simple waffle stitch. We only have to use double crochet stitches and post stitches, which are really easy to do. Hi from everyone. Everyone's saying hi and feel free to say hi to everyone. I'm so happy that everyone's here to join me. And remember too, you can always rewatch this class if you um, need to go a little bit slower or if you just want to rewatch it, it's going to be on the recorded videos. So let's get started with our starting chain. So you're almost always gonna start with your starting chain. This is my slip knot. This is how I do it. So I just put one piece over the shorter end over the longer end. I put my uh, thumb and finger in there and I do like a little twist. And then I just grab that tail and pull it through. So of course you're always gonna to have to start with a slip knot when you're working in rows. And then we're just gonna start with a starting chain of 22. So let's get close so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna yarn over. See, I've got that first loop on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through that first loop. And that's a chain. It's as simple as that. So we'll, we'll do 22 of those. Next two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22. I wanted to tell everyone with this pattern too, this is about the width that it's gonna be. Um, but if you want, see it's it's about, I don't have my measuring tape, but this is maybe like um, six inches or so. If you wanted to, if you see that you made a swatch and it's a little too skinny, you can always, or you wanna just turn it into like a blanket, you can always make a longer starting chain in a multiple of three. So your plus one for this for the turning chain. So you could always just do that if you want to modify it in any way, just work in multiples of three. So now I have my starting chain here and I have 22 chains on this chain and I like to work into the back bump, which if you turn it over, you can see how there's little like bumps here on the back. And whenever I work into the starting chain, I work into those bumps because it just makes like a cleaner finish instead of going into the center of the chain there. So the pattern says 
we're going to double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So if I count my bumps, this is the first chain from the hook. This is the second. And this is the third right there. So what we're going to do is work underneath that bump. So I'm going to yarn over my hook and just insert my hook right underneath that bump right there. So now I have one, two, three loops on the hook and I'll yarn over, pull through two. Now I have two loops and then I'll yarn over and pull through two again. And then I've made one double crochet. And now I'm going to do the same thing all the way across because the pattern says double crochet in the third chain from the hook and in each chain across. So we're going to work a double crochet into each one of those and we're going to work into the back bump. So yarn over, insert your hook under the back bump. Yarn over, pull through. Yeah, so yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert under, pull through. So you have two loops on the hook. Pull through two, pull through two. Pull through two and pull through two. Yarn over, insert under the bump. Yarn over and pull that loop through until you have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two and yarn over, pull through two. So now I have one, two, three, four, five so far. The pattern says this one doesn't count as a stitch, but I think it has to count as a stitch to make the stitch multiple work. So we're just gonna count, that might be an error there. So we're gonna do this all the way across, just work one double crochet into each of these chains, and that will be my row one. I'm always gonna kind of stop and make sure I don't have any questions in the third bump, yeah. So we're going to go into the third, the third bump from the hook because it says the third chain from the hook. So if you, you just have to count down from the one that's on the hook and go down three, right? So if I have, let me show you real quick, just for someone who asked here. Let's say this is my starting chain. One, two, three, four, five. What you do is you count, see this loop that's right on the hook there, this first one, that doesn't count as anything because it's not really a full chain, it's more like just a loop. So this right here is the first chain from the hook, this is the second chain from the hook, and this is the third. That's just the back of the chain, it looks like this on the other side. First chain, second chain, third chain from the hook. So you just count down one, two, three, and then work that first double crochet into that third chain from the hook. So we pull through, we have three loops, pull through two and pull through two. So that's what we did if you missed the beginning or if I was going too fast. And then we just continue to do the same thing all the way across after the third and the third, after the third, in the, into the third. So the bump of the third chain, the back bump of the third chain, if you see it in a pattern, um, it, it'll say, sometimes say in the third, you always will work in the third or the fourth or the fifth or whatever the pattern says, chain from the hook. It's a good idea to work into the back bump. Once you get used to it, it's easier and it just makes a nice clean finish on the other side. That's why I do it. You don't really have to, you can go directly into the center of the chain, but to me, it just doesn't look as pretty. So if you can get used to just working and it's just that one loop, so it's easy to work under. So you're gonna work into the third um, chain from the hook and then each chain across. 
or every chain after, right. And then starting with the third chain and then in every chain after. But after the first time, again, in the third chain or every chain, every chain. So it's only gonna be the first bit of instructions because once you've worked into that third chain from the hook, the, um, it's like no longer on the hook anymore. So you wouldn't say into the, uh, the third chain or the fourth chain from the hook, right? Because now what's on my hook are my stitches. It's not, it's no longer a chain that's on my hook. The chain is right here, but what's attached to my hook is actually a double crochet. So we wouldn't say that anymore. So the only time we say in the third chain from the hook or the whatever chain from the hook is if we're working with a starting chain or if it tells me, okay, now make another chain. Okay, well now I'm gonna chain one, two, three, four, five. Now I have chains attached to my hook, right? So now I would work into one of the chains from the hook, whatever the pattern says. But once you start working in double crochets, that's what's attached to your hook. So it shouldn't say any more chains from the hook, if that makes sense. That would only be like the first bit of instruction. Okay, so you said make a multiplication of three for a bigger project, 22 in this pattern, is that correct? Right, so if you, um, see, it says you're starting with 22, but that's, you have to uh, consider the turning chain. So if you look after row one, it says we end up with 21 double crochet, which is a multiple of three. So that's where the multiple of three comes in. So what you want in your first row should be a multiple of three, right? So if we finish this first row, if I work into the third chain from the hook, because those first two chains, we didn't work into them, right? So even though we chained 22, we didn't put anything in those first two chains, we skipped them. So that therefore, at the end of row one, we're not gonna have 22 double crochets, we're gonna have 21, if we count the first two as a stitch. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll finish this and show you it so it makes sense. So what I did was worked into um, each double crochet across that chain, right? Now, if I count, this is where I think there's an error in the pattern. If I count from here, we'll show you how to count these. This is one double crochet. This is one double crochet. You see, we're counting the posts of the double crochet. You can also count from the top, this V, is a double crochet, this V is a stitch. All these Vs are stitches. And because it's a double crochet, it's a long stitch. So we can count the posts because it, visually it's a little bit easier to do it that way. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Right? That's 20. This chain two, we're gonna count it as a stitch. So we have 21 because in row one, it says we wanna end up with 21 double crochet at the end of row one, right? That's why I said, I think this is an error because it says the skip two chains do not count as a stitch. Well, in order for us to have 21 double crochet, they have to count as a stitch. If they didn't count as a stitch, then we would have to start with 23. Okay, but I mean, sometimes you'll see errors in patterns. You can always just make it work, right? So we're just gonna make it work this way. We're just gonna count this as a stitch, no problem. And that's only gonna be an issue in the first row. So what I would do is like, let's say you wanted to make it a larger blanket, you could, or a larger scarf and you wanted to do a multiple of 30, which is a multiple of three, or, or you wanna do 30, which is a multiple of three, you're gonna have a wider project. You're gonna to have to have your starting chain with 31. So make a chain of 31 and count these two skipped chains as a stitch. Or you can make a chain of 32 and don't count those two chains as a stitch. However you get to a multiple of 30 for row one will work. 
or a multiple of whatever else is a multiple of three. However you get there is fine. You can even do foundation double crochets, which eliminates the starting chain altogether. So there's lots of ways to do it. Um, when you use the multiple, you wanna pay attention to how many stitches there actually are in the piece, not necessarily the starting chain because the starting chain is always going to have those first skipped chains as part of it, okay? What does skipped mean? So if you, I'll show you here, you get this little piece here and I'll show you how I skipped it. If, now you're always gonna see this at this, you know, in, in a pattern. Here's my starting chain, right? I just did a few here. How many do I have on my hook? How many, how many chains do I have attached to my hook? This one doesn't count. It never, ever does. This is just a loop. It doesn't count as a chain. This is a chain. This is a chain. This is a chain. This is a chain. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chains, right? Now, once I start working into those chains, you will never see a pattern where it says work into the first chain from the hook because it's difficult and it's weird. So it'll always start at the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth. So it's never going to be the first one. So because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if I skip this first one and I put stitches into the remaining chains, I'll only have seven because I skipped this one and it doesn't have a stitch in it. So I'll only end up with seven stitches, right? So you always have to, so, so you're gonna skip a chain and it's gonna count as the turning chain because it turns it, right? And it makes it so you can turn and work into those chains. So once I start working into these chains, I'll only have seven left, right? So even if you're starting chain, your starting chain is always gonna be a little bit more than your first row because your first row is a row of stitches and your starting chain is just chains. So hopefully that makes sense. So skipping is just skipping. You're, sk you're not working into that one. And I could skip stitches. If I don't work into any of these stitches, I've skipped them. So it's, it's kind of exactly what it means, what it sounds like. Okay, so what we have here on row one is 21 stitches and that's what we need to make this pattern work is 21 and we have 21. So now we're gonna move on to row two and we're gonna start with a chain two. And then you can see in the pattern, it says it does not count as a stitch here and throughout. So because that's how it's written, we won't count it as a stitch. A lot of the time it, it does count as a stitch. So now I'm at the end of my row and I'm just gonna chain up. So do exactly what we did with the slip knot. One, two. It says to chain up two, I've chained up two, and now I'm just gonna turn my work. Now I'm gonna work back this way. Now, since this does not count as a stitch, we are gonna work into the base of where that chain two came out of, which is right here. If this counted as a stitch, we wouldn't work it here. We would go to the next stitch, which is here. And then this would just count as the double crochet for that row. But this pattern says it does not count as a stitch. So I'm gonna work into here with a double crochet. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert right under those two loops, which looks like a V. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Now I have my three loops on my hook again. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So you can see how it looks like this could be a stitch if you were counting it, and this is definitely a stitch because that's a double crochet I made, but it says we don't count it, so we're not gonna count it. So here is one double crochet, okay? Then it says, so we did double crochet in the first double crochet, front post double crochet around the next double crochet. Okay, so if this is the first double crochet, we need to work our post, our front post double crochet around this stitch here. So this is the, the post, the long part, and this is the top of the stitch, 
right? That's what we usually work under the, that V to work into the top of a stitch. But here we're gonna work around the post. So I'm gonna do it exactly as I would a regular double crochet. I'm gonna yarn over and then I'm gonna insert my hook from the front to the back and then from the back to the front so I can work around this post. So I'll yarn over again, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. And that was one front post double crochet. And we'll do a few more of those. So now it says uh, double crochet in each of the next two. Okay, so here's the next two. What you have to do is look at it from this way. And you see there's a V right there. So I'm gonna skip that because I already worked around the post. So I worked into that stitch technically. So we don't work back into it again, otherwise we would be increasing. So we're gonna go into the next double crochet, which is right here. So we just use the yarn over, insert your hook under that V, which is the top of the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, We'll do that again, yarn over, insert your hook under both loops, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So now I've done a double crochet, a front post double crochet, and then two double crochets. Can you show which post you worked around? Just consider a border, ignore the count. So it's just considered a border. Yes, you can use any yarn for this because this is a, um, somebody asked if I can use chunky yarn because this is um, just a scarf. So it doesn't matter if it's a little wider. If you do use chunky yarn, it's gonna be wider than the picture. So just consider that, but you'll see how wide it's gonna be once you make your first row. So do it exactly as the pattern, do it with 21. And then you'll see, okay, your first row might be like this because it's, bigger, thicker yarn, and you're gonna to have to use a bigger hook. But you can definitely um, do substitutes with yarn, especially when you're making scarves because the width of it is not as important. If you're doing, um, like I said, hats or any kind of sweater or anything like that, you have to always get the right gauge when you do a yarn substitution. So if you're doing a different weight, if you don't have the right gauge, it's not gonna fit right. So that's where you have to be, um, that's where you kind of have to stick with the with the same weight yarn. But if you're doing something like a scarf, you could usually make a substitute like that. So it's just considered a border and ignored in the stitch count. Those chains that we skipped in the beginning, it's gonna depend on the pattern. So sometimes the pattern will say they count as a stitch and sometimes they won't count as a stitch. But that very, very first one, it doesn't, it, it never counts as anything because you just skipped it in order to turn the chain. So I wouldn't call it a border. Um, it's more like um, it, it's a turning chain is what it is. It's just in order for you to get that yarn to turn because you're not turning it the way you turn a row. So you just have to kind of work it over. So it's considered a turning chain. It's always, always a turning chain. Okay, so now, where are we? We've done two double crochets. Now here in the pattern, you'll see a lot of stars in pattern. You always wanna remember, um, know what those are. So we did a front post double crochet, and then we did a double crochet in the next two. And then we have a little semicolon here, and then it says repeat from the star. Okay, well that means we just go back to right before the star, and we do the same thing. And it says repeat that to the last two double crochet. So all we're gonna do is repeat those same three things until we get to the last two double crochets of the row. So let's see what that looks like. So we're gonna start with the front post double crochet because that's where the star was. Here are the, uh, here's one double crochet that I worked into the top of and here's another double crochet. So the next one up is this one. So we work around this post. That's the next one up in the row. So we just yarn over, insert from front to back, right? So I'm kind of going around this to the side of it, to the back, you can see my hooks coming at the back and then put your hook back 
from back to front. So you have the post of only that one stitch over your hook like that, okay? Yarn over, pull that through. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. You now see, if I turn it to the back, you can see that the top of that stitch is doesn't have anything worked into it because we worked around the post. So we're going to leave that with nothing worked into it, and then we're going to work into these next two double crochets here and here. So yarn over, insert my hook under that V, and make a double crochet, and then do the same thing here under the V, make a double crochet. Okay, now to the post again. So these stitches of this row, of row one, I've worked into them. I've worked into this one and I've worked into this one. So the next one up is this one for the post stitch. So yarn over, insert from front to back and then from back to front. So that stitch is kind of like laying over your hook and then just work a double crochet right around that post. And that just pushes it to the front of the work. That's all it really does. So if you look at it from the back, it looks a little different. These stitches are pushed to the front of the work. Okay, so don't we don't work into there because we just worked it with the post. And then we just do a double crochet and a double crochet in the next two. And then another post. So we skip this one. We're not really skipping it. We worked into it. So we don't have to do anything with these two because we worked a double crochet into it. So we just go front to back, back to front, and make a post stitch. See, we're just, do, we're, we're repeating the same thing across. Don't work there. Whenever you do a post stitch, you do not work into the top of that stitch that you work the post into, because if you do, you'll just be increasing your stitch count, which you don't want to do. Can you show me what the front post is? Yep, I can repeat this part because we're, we're doing the same thing across the row. So we're kind of, it's repeating it here. So let's look at these stitches. You see how I have my double crochets here? This, where you can see the long part of it, here, I'll push it up, see? That is a double crochet. But this part of it is the post because it's sort of like, maybe like the base. And then this, if you look, turn your hook this way and you see these V's, V, V, that's the top of the stitch. So you're very typically gonna be working into the tops of the stitches. When it says double crochet in the next double crochet or single crochet in the next double crochet, they mean work into the, that V. That's what the pattern is always gonna mean, okay? You work under the two loops of that V. So I'm calling it the top of a stitch to differentiate it, but you won't really see that in a pattern. The pattern will just say double crochet into the next double crochet. And that's understood that you're working into the top of it under that V. If they want you to work around a post, they'll be very specific and it'll say work a front post double crochet or a back post double crochet, in which case you're working around the post, which is this part right here this long part right here, that's the post, okay? And we're working not into it, rather around it. So if you can see this stitch right here that I worked at post, it's just a worked around that post. It's not worked into it, it's worked around it, okay? So that's kind of the difference. Can you review the 40? Uh, what is, in, okay, good. Will the link be sent via email so we can focus here? There should be um, the, I think the host might have to help me for the, yeah. for the actual PDF. So right above that comment, I, I put the two links, um, yeah. both for the YouTube channel and michaels.com slash classes. So you can um, find the recording in 24 to 48 hours there. And you can also print the PDF. Yes. of the pattern so you have it in front of you okay so now we're just working across 
we're doing the same thing. So we're kind of repeating what we already did. I'm just gonna work a double crochet into that double crochet and a double crochet into this double crochet. And then in the next double crochet, I'm working a post around a front post stitch, which is a double crochet around the post of this stitch. So insert from front to back and then come back from back to front and then just work a double crochet around the post of that stitch. You don't need to work in the top. And then double, double. See how the pattern says just double crochet in the next double crochet? They don't say into the top of it because it's understood that if we work a double crochet or a single crochet or whatever, it goes into the top. Okay, so we don't have to do this. We did this. Next one is a post. And then the next two are double crochets. And it said, we're gonna repeat that sequence to the last two stitches. So here's one stitch, which is the, that, uh, those first two skip chains and then the first double crochet that I made. That looks kind of weird. I think I made that wrong, but anyway. If you make a mistake, pull it, just, you know, pull it out and fix it. Okay. Here are the first two chains, which need to count as a stitch. So what we're gonna do, it says to the last two stitches. So we're at the last two stitches. So we're gonna front post double crochet around the next double crochet and double crochet in the last double crochet. So we're at the last two. So we just work a front post double crochet. around this one. And then in the last stitch, which is the turning chain, but that's okay, because often it counts as a stitch and we just work directly into it, okay? It looks different than the rest of the stitches, but it's okay, you can work a stitch into it. So all I do is work right into the top of that turning chain. So I'm just gonna double crochet, go right into it, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Like I said, it looks a little different, but what's important is that we have the right stitch count because if we have the wrong stitch count, it's just not gonna work. So I should have, I should still have a total of 21. So let's count all these stitches and make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And this last one is one stitch, even though it looks like two. That's 21, okay? So make sure you always maintain your stitch count whenever you're working any kind of pattern. If you're new and you're just starting, it's a good idea to count your stitches after every row, because if you don't, you will accidentally, like right here, it would be very easy for me to add an extra stitch here because this looks like it's two stitches, but it's not. So what will happen is if you add an extra, then the next row you'll add, you'll accidentally add another extra and the next row you'll add another extra and your work will start to go like this. And it'll start to turn into like a triangle. So the only way to maintain a nice straight even edge is to keep track of your stitch count and make sure you um, are always have the right amount of stitches. Just checking, I have seven, for, I messed up somewhere and I only got 18. So see, um, that's fine. If you mess up somewhere and you only have 18, all you have to do is take this, pull it out, and just pull until you get to where you messed up or until probably the end of that row, and then go back and do it again. That's what you have to do, because if you don't, it's, it's, it's just going to be not worth it <laughs> to keep going if you have the wrong stitch count. So if you have the wrong stitch count, pull it out and start over. You're going to probably have to do that a lot of times. If you're just starting out, it's fine. It happens to everybody. And then once you um, get used to seeing what your, what your stitches look like, what they're supposed to look like, you'll get very familiar with that. And you'll realize right away if your stitch count is off. Okay. So after you're like not a beginner anymore, you won't really have to count them after every row you'll notice right away if you've made a mistake. It's just a matter of having enough practice to visually see um, you know, that you've made a mistake because 
like I'm, I'm trying to learn how to knit and I have no idea if I've made a mistake or not. <laughs> it's hard to count the stitches because they just don't look familiar to me. Um, but it's just one of those things that you have to do over and over. And once you do, you'll get, you know, you'll get more familiar with that. Okay. That is a nice, oh yeah, this is a great hook. Isn't this? I really love these hooks. These are tulip hooks and they have them in like, um, there's like a gold one and there's a pink and this is the red and the red is my favorite. I don't know why it just seems to work slide nice and really easily. It's a very, um, it's a very well manufactured thing, hook product. I just like these ones. Everybody has their favorite and you'll have your favorite too. Can you add a stitch like you do in knitting? Yes, you can always add a stitch. And the, the, all you have to do to add a stitch is um, like, let's say I wanted to add a stitch here. I just would work two stitches into that stitch instead of working one. So I would put a double crochet in there and then into that very same stitch, I would put another double crochet in there. It's probably even easier to add stitches and crochet. See, I've got two stitches in one stitch. I've put two in one, so I've increased. So now my row will have 22, but like I said, my work will start to be wonky. So you only wanna increase just like in knitting when you're when the pattern calls for it, which will happen a lot, of course, when you're doing things that have shaping. Okay, so we are on row three and it starts with a chain of two. So we're gonna do one and two, and then we're gonna turn your work like you always do. And then we're gonna double crochet in the next two double crochet. So remember this pattern said that this chain two that I just made is not counting as a stitch. So that means this is nothing, okay? It's in this pattern, it's nothing. You don't count it as anything. So that means we have to work into that first stitch right there. Now, if this counted as a stitch, then that would be a stitch and it looks like a stitch. So it's perfectly fine. Often it will count as a stitch. Okay. And then what I would do is I would work the next stitch into this next V or top of the next stitch, right? Instead of this one. Um, but because we know very specifically that it says it does not count as a stitch, and it says double crochet in the next two double crochet, we have to double crochet into this one and into this one. Those are the next two. The next two doesn't mean this one and this one, unless this counted as a stitch. Then the next two would be this one and this one. But in this case, the next two is the first one and the second one. It, it, it gets a little confusing, but you'll get used to it. Just remember that often does count as a stitch. And when it does, don't work anything into that first space. Just totally skip it, okay? But here we're gonna work into it because that's what the pattern says. So we're gonna go by the pattern. And you see how it looks so big? That's why they usually don't count it as a stitch because it looks like two stitches. So it can be confusing, but we'll just do it. But I explained it so you guys understand. <laughs> so then we're gonna work another double crochet into the next stitch. So now we have two because we only did two according to the pattern. And now we're gonna do a front post double crochet around each of the next two double crochet. So see what my work looks like now we've turned. So this is the back of what I was, this is the front, what we were working on before. Now we're working on the back or the wrong side of my work. That's why it says WS in the beginning. That means this is the wrong side, okay? So we're gonna do a front post double crochet around this stitch. And we're gonna do a front post double crochet around this stitch. And then it says double crochet in the next double crochet. Okay, so if I look at here, this is the top of a stitch and this is the top of a stitch, but we just did it around the post so we don't have to work into the top. We have to work into the next one, which is this one right here. So it's gonna go under the V of that stitch and work a double crochet. Okay, and now we're doing the same thing across. So post stitch, 
post stitch. So yarn over, work around the post. See how it looks a little different on the wrong side of your work. And then double crochet into the top of the next stitch. I'll show you. So this is the back or the wrong side, and this is the front. So now you can see the waffle pattern is starting to, to show on the front side of your work. What happened is these stitches that we did the front post around, if you look at it on the front side, they're being pushed to the back now because we're pushing them to the front here. So on the opposite side, they're being sort of pulled to the back. So we're gonna do that again. A front post. And then another front post around the next one. Okay, we don't work into there, we don't work into there, we work into the next double crochet. And if you, as you can see, the next double crochet is where we worked a post stitch on the previous row. So we're just going to go into the top of that stitch. And now post stitch, post stitch. Front post and front post. Okay, and double into this one. And you can kind of see it'll be a little bit intuitive at this point because um, the ones that we did post stitch before, they're sort of already pushed to the other side of the work. So you can kind of tell, yeah, that's where I need to work just a regular double crochet. And then post stitch and post stitch, and then double crochet. Uh, repeat from start to the last double crochet. So this is the last double crochet. And then it says double crochet in the last double crochet. So I'm just gonna double crochet in the top there and turn my work. This is the front now. So this is row three, we can count again. So this one is one, two, these are kind of pushed to the back, but we can still see them. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and the last one is 21. So we're still good with our stitch count. Okay, now you can see it's kind of looking like something. <laughs> like once you work more, it'll have a nice uh, waffle stitch pattern. Let's do one more row because after we did row three, it's just as repeat rows two and three. So you just keep going with those, right? So let's do one more row two so I can show you how it comes together a bit more. So we're just gonna um, chain up two, turn your work. So now we're back on the right side because we're doing a row two. So we're on the front side or the right side of your work. And then double crochet in the first double crochet. Here's that very first one that we talked about. Front post double crochet around the next double crochet. So here's the next one that we need to do a front post. And then double crochet in these two here. So we're working into the top of the stitch double and double. So now you can kind of see if you look closely at this, you can see that these post stitches are lining up from the row to the next and these stitches are being purposely pushed to the back. So that might help you in terms of knowing where to put your place your stitches because you can kind of see a pattern coming together. You can say, oh, okay, this is where I need to do another post stitch so they line up properly. So there's a post stitch. And then here's the, those two stitches that are sort of being pushed to the back. Okay, I know I need to go into the top of those two. And this is where you need to just play, pay close attention when you do the post stitches to make sure you don't work into the top of that stitch again. Um, by accident, right? So just take a quick look and say, okay, I didn't work into that one because that's where the post was. That's where the post stitch was. That's my two doubles. Here's my post stitch. 
See what I'm saying? If I were to say, okay, I'm gonna work another double crochet. If I were to accidentally put it in here, which is that, which is the post stitch where I already worked a stitch, then I would be increasing and I don't wanna increase. So we go to the, so just make sure you've skipped that. It's sort of skipped it, not really skipped it. You just skip the top of it because you did the post stitch around it. Double, double post. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm looking there. Don't want to work into there. Double, double post. Double, double. There's a post. It kind of gets visually um, easier to see where you need to go. And then here's my last two stitches. I do a post and then I do a double in that last stitch. And I should still have 21. Okay. So that's it. So then you repeat row three. On the, when you turn your work, you're going to do row three. It looks different on the back. That's how it's going to look on the back. And then you turn and do row two again and just do rows two and three until you have a scarf that in the pattern it says 66 inches. But if you want to keep going and make it longer, you just repeat those same two rows. So let me make sure I don't have any more questions. Are you using the H8 if I wanted to make a scarf? Wider, do I multiply by three or can I use a different hook? I'm a newbie. So you can do either one of those things. If you want to use just a larger hook, you can do that and it'll be wider. Um, or you can use like thicker yarn, like a, a, a number, this is a number four yarn. You could use a number five and a bigger hook and it'll be bigger. The only thing I would say is if you're you, like, see this yarn? This one's really thick. So if I use this yarn and use this exact pattern with a number nine hook or an eight or something like that, um, I would have a wider end product and it would look just as beautiful and perfect. So you can definitely do that. If you're using a worsted weight yarn and you go up a hook to a bigger hook, that will make it a little bit wider, but it's also gonna be more like your stitches might be more spread out a little bit and it might be harder to um, kind of maneuver it because it's just gonna depend on like your tension and stuff like that. But if you just use like a really big hook on a worsted weight yarn, it might be harder to crochet with it. So I would prefer that you used a thicker yarn and a bigger hook to do this or just add a few stitches to your chain. So if instead of doing 21, like we have here, if you started with this, this yarn and, and this hook, if you started with 30 or 27 and you had something, oh, I, and you had something like this, right? This one I think was 27. So it would just be a little bit wider or anything that's a multiple of three. And remember the multiple of three is gonna be for your first row. So you wanna end up with either 21 or 20, um, whatever it is, seven, 30, 33, 36 for row one, which means you have to add two chains, okay? So if you want to do 30, then just start with a chain of 32 and don't count those first two skip chains. Okay, so does this pattern, are you working with an H8 if I want to? Does this pattern work with other stitches? Mm, no, I don't think so. Because if you were using other stitches, then you, have, you would just have a, diff, it would be a different pattern. So if you want to just do like, say, take this yarn and make a chain as long as you like, and then work a double crochet into each one of those chains and then say, write it down. Okay, I have 35 double crochet and then just go back and turn and work all double crochet and all double crochet and, and just do that. Then you can make your own scarf, right? It would just be all double crochet scarf. It would look, of course, different. It wouldn't look like this but that would just be a different pattern. So you can use the same yarn and the same hook for really, you know, if you wanna make up your own kind of pattern, but if you're doing different stitches, it's not gonna be 
this pattern. So I hope that that's kind of a, I don't know if I'm understanding the question properly, but no, if you're using different stitches, it's not this pattern because this is a specific pattern, just like all of them are, right? Um, like if like if you were to try to substitute single crochets for the double crochets, it wouldn't work. It would just look different. You would have a something, but it wouldn't look like this. Um, why does it indent at the beginning of row three? Well, you mean this, <laughs> like how it goes in a little bit like that? That's normal. That's always going to be that way. And I think it might have something to do with that. This pattern has that. Remember how I was saying they don't count the chain two as a stitch, and I don't really love that because it doesn't make a nice clean edge. Let's see how I have a this piece here. See, this is double crochets also. See how the edge is more straight here and here? That's because that first chain two of the row, whether it's a chain two or a chain three right here, we're not counting that. that. That counts as the stitch. That's the first stitch of the row. The only th reason why this is looking kind of wonky here is because um, what they had me do in this pattern was to chain up two and then work a double crochet into that same space rather than counting that chain two as a stitch. So it looks like it just added a stitch. It looks like there's two stitches in there. And that's just not really like preferable to me because it does end up looking like that. So what I would do if, if this was me, I would just kind of modify it and I would count that first chain two as a stitch and I wouldn't work that first stitch right into there. I would go right into the um, post stitches, right? So those are just little modifications that you can do with patterns and then you'll have a cleaner edge like this. Do you do double double post on row one and row three, double, double post. So on row two, you're gonna do post, double, double, post, double, double, post, double, double. And then on row three, you're gonna do double, double, post, double, double, post, not post, post, double, double, post. So one, one post, wait, yeah. One post stitch. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, 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 you're right. So two post stitch, two post stitches on the wrong side. See, here's the wrong side. You can see I have two post stitches. And on the right side, I have one post stitch. So it's going to be, um, to say it that way, it's going to be post double double. And then on row three, it's going to be post post double not double double post post just post post double okay so uh, yeah maybe a clearer way to say it would be um do a post stitch and then two double crochets a post stitch and then two double crochets and then and then on the next row the wrong side you do a double crochet and two post stitches, a double crochet and two post stitches. And you'll see it once it start, starts to come together, you'll see where the post stitches are and where the other stitch, where the regular doubles are. Uh, the difference in yarn, what is the difference in yarns like worsted? It's just the weight. So you have a, a yarn that's worsted like this, which is kind of average, like medium weight. And then you have something that's a, uh, heavier weight, like a jumbo. So you can see if you put them together, one is much thicker than this one. So you're gonna have a, um, you're gonna have, of course, bigger stitches or a wider finished. This one's kind of a, not really a thin one. Then there's a fingering weight yarn, which is gonna be a little, I don't really have a true fingering weight right around here. But it's basically just like the thickness of the yarn and all of that information is gonna be on the label. So you can always see if it's a medium or they have like, I think one, two, three, four. I mean, there's whole blog posts on it. It's probably a lot longer than just a one question answer, but um, you can learn tons and tons about different yarns 
But just as a beginner, just know it's going to be mostly about the weight and that's going to affect what hook you use, uh, what gauge you get, and also how your finished piece is going to look. Okay. Can you show us the postage again? Would it be straight if you count the chain two as a double crochet? It will be straighter if you count the chain two as a double crochet, in my opinion, because you won't have that. Um, you won't have to it's what happens is there's too much bunched up into that one stitch because there's a chain and then there's a double crochet all into that one stitch and that's why it's kind of going like curving like that right so it would look straighter i think and this a lot of this is just a matter of preference if you just counted that chain two as a stitch because it's kind of the same width as a regular stitch. So let's just say we're gonna count that as a stitch, okay? And then we're gonna, and somebody asked to show the post again, so we'll show the post again. We're just gonna count that as a stitch. We're not gonna work into there. And we're gonna do the post stitch around the, this post stitch or around this stitch. So I'm gonna yarn over like I start my double crochet. I'm gonna insert my hook, bring it close so you can see, from the front, right, to the back. So you can see it's coming out the back and then from the back to the front. So just insert your hook back around to the front. And now you can see my hook is back towards me and the stitch, the post of the stitch is sort of laying over my hook, right? Okay, so then you just yarn over like you would finish a double crochet, pull that through. And now you have three loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. Now you can almost see already how much straighter it looks that we didn't add another stitch there. See how it lines up better with the previous row? Because this is the end of the previous row and this is the beginning of the current row. So what happened is at the end of the row, we only had one double crochet, but then at the beginning of the row, we're adding a chain two and a double crochet in the same space. So that's why it's sticking out more because it's wider than the, than the previous one. So if we keep it just with a chain two, rather than making it a chain two and a double crochet all in the same space, to me, it's just gonna end up with a straighter edge, okay? Because, because your widths are more equal. The pattern's not written badly. It's it's just, um, you know, it might just be that the person who wrote it crochets much tighter and their chain has a smaller width. I tend to be a little bit loose, so it just doesn't look as good the way I crochet it. Um, and sometimes people will write that chain two because it's short instead of a chain three counting as a double crochet, and they'll just do it like that or if it's a much smaller yarn like a thinner yarn it might not make as much of a difference so it's all just kind of personal preference things i've seen it like this before it's not the first time i've seen it i mean i write patterns too so it's just not my preference and once you get to do this a lot you'll get your own preference too and you'll say okay i don't really love that so i'm just going to kind of make that little modification and the pattern will still work perfectly fine. You just make your own little modification. But if you see that it's making that sort of curve and you don't like it, just say, oh, I'm gonna try this instead and then do everything else the same as the pattern. And you might have a nicer edge. With crochet, I think what people don't realize is um, everybody crochets differently. So no matter how much of a beginner or an advanced person you are, what I do is still not going to end up looking exactly like what you do. This is all handmade stuff. So it's going to be, there's going to be always some kind of variation. So um, once you kind of get your way of doing it, your stitches might be a little looser, or tighter, whatever. The most important thing is consistency. So as long as you can get yourself consistent with how you like it, then you can make little modifications here and there. And also the other important thing is your gauge, because if you're going off a pattern, you can't expect your finished product to be exactly like the pattern if you are a looser crocheter or a tighter crocheter, which is fine. It doesn't matter however you do it is good. However it feels comfortable for you is good. 
But if you're a looser crocheter, you have to change your hook if you're not getting the same gauge. So if you're getting 10 stitches and four inches and you, the pattern says you need to be getting eight stitches and four inches, you need to make an adjustment because it's not gonna end up the way um, the finished measurements are gonna be wrong. And then you're gonna be very unhappy with what you do. So it's not that a pattern is written badly. It's just that there's so much variation in how people crochet that um, you just have to take those little things into consideration. And I would say focus on your gauge. It, even if you have to, even, like people always say, but this pattern says use a five hook or what hook should I use? The hook is always going to depend on your gauge. Always, always, always. Um, it doesn't matter if the, if the person wrote, use a six millimeter hook. That's just a recommendation. If you cannot get a, the correct gauge, with a six millimeter hook, then you need to change your hook size until you get the right gauge. And if you ever see a pattern that doesn't have a gauge, I would get a different pattern because it's kind of like the basic base of a pattern is the gauge, right? Because everybody crochets differently. So um, unless it's something like a granny square and you're you know, gonna maybe put, um, even in that case, you should always have a gauge, but there might be a very you know, small situation where they say gauge is not important, but if it doesn't have it at all <laughs> or something like that, then I'd say just yes, maybe try to find a different pattern because that's probably not gonna be a great pattern because gauge is always the most important thing because we all crochet differently. So that's why you might see variations in patterns and things, okay? So I hope I answered, I had a lot of questions, which is good because this was a pretty short uh, tutorial. So I'm glad I was able to answer some questions and I hope I helped everybody. And if I went a little fast, I know this, this um, if you're a beginner, it's a little fast. So just go ahead and watch the uh, video replay as many times as you need to, to get it, to get it down, but it's all about practice. So practice, 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 and you'll find your, your nice, consistent tension and your gauge and all that stuff. And um, please enjoy crocheting because you're going to love it. And I see somebody's showing me some things and that looks amazing. Whoever that is, I can't see your name on my computer, but it looks great. <laughs> It looks really, really awesome, everybody. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.